after breakfast, Sue goes back to her room for some finishing touches. Her makeup. Be careful when it comes to lipstick. Choose a shade that goes with your own coloring, and then easy does it. Easy does it? Times have changed. In the Selfie Society, Elf Beauty has brought quality cosmetics to the masses. Can the stock rise in the face of its established competitors? Whenever I'm out here in San Francisco, I'm constantly reminded that you don't have to be a traditional tech company in order to take advantage of technology. Consider the case of ELF Beauty, the cosmetics company focused on making low-cost makeup for your eyes, lips, and face, hence the moniker ELF. Now, this company, which IPO'd last September, has become one of the fastest growing cosmetics companies in the country. And I think a lot of that has to do with their embrace of technology. You see, ELF Beauty got its start as a pure e-commerce business. And while you can now find their products in stores, including some of their own, the fact is they've totally mastered the web, mining online reviews and social media for useful feedback, which then helps them design new products in a very fast fashion. Now, the stock hasn't done much since it came public, but I think this is a compelling play on the rise of the selfie generation. We got a chance to speak with Tarang Umin. He's the chairman and CEO of ELF Beauty earlier this week. Take a look. Trang, it's an honor to have you on because what you've done is brought luxury to the masses, and I want you to describe how it works for Elf. Oh, sure. Well, our pl thank you for having me. Sure. Um, our mission is to make luxurious beauty accessible for all women, and the way we do that is we introduce high-quality cosmetics, prestige-inspired, at extraordinary value. In fact, most of our items sell for $6 or less. All right, now, how can you afford to do that, or does the other guy just have a big profit margin? Well, the way we work is everything we have goes into the quality of the products and the price. So we don't hire celebrity endorsers. We don't put a lot of money on media. Our whole brand was created online. And so as an e-commerce business, our entire engagement model was direct to consumer. And what it allowed us to do was cut out a lot of the costs that a lot of people spent on celebrities and put it into the quality of the product. And in turn, what it allowed us to do is really attract one of the best consumers in this entire category. I think what's important for people to recognize is this is no longer a discretionary item in an era of selfie, in an era of snap, in an era of, of, of Instagram, right? No, absolutely. With the selfie generation, particularly our core consumer, we are twice as developed amongst millennials, overdeveloped amongst Hispanics and African Americans, but most significantly, we appeal to the makeup enthusiast. And this is a woman where cosmetics is not a discretionary purchase. She loves everything about it, from learning about it online, sharing tips with friends, trying new products. And so for her, this brand really resonates because it gives her what she wants, her ability to play with, with cosmetics and really enjoy and look great. I think that one of the things that you have pioneered uh, is the idea of the quick cycle. And I want people to understand this because I think a lot of people don't, don't understand that the time to market matters for cosmetics more than almost anything else. It does. And it goes right back to this core consumer. So if you think of a millennial, she doesn't want to wait. If she's interested in something, she wants it now. So our ability to go from initial idea to selling on elfcosmetics.com in 20 weeks is really revolutionary relative to the long traditional kind of product cycles that a lot of other brands. At the same time, you're in some very high quality uh, mass discounters and you have plans to be in some more of them. No, absolutely. About 85% um, of our business right now are in leading national retailers. So Target is the retailer we've been in the longest. Uh, we are also in Walmart, CVS. Um, the third quarter, we started testing on uh, Ulta.com or selling on Ulta.com, and all of that's gone well. Wherever we go into distribution, we end up being the most productive, most incremental brand. That well, I wanted to ask you about that because when I look at the uh, fastest growing brands, I look at your 43%, Maybelline's nine, Revlon six, L'Oreal six. I mean, that is an extraordinarily fast growth rate versus everybody else. Where can this stop? Well, I mean, our aspiration is to be a billion dollar brand. And part of the reason why, where that aspiration comes from is we have growth drivers in terms of every dimension of our business, whether it's building a brand. We know when a woman gets her hands on Elf, she loves it. Uh, expanding brand penetration. Starting with the m biggest priorities, the retailers we're already in. We still have a long way to grow within Target, within Walmart, in the doors we're already in, as well as international, our e-commerce business. We also have our own stores. Uh, uh, that you have a bunch in the New York area. We do. In New York and L.A., we have about 19 stores in total right now. Is, it, is that just to find out what people want, or do you want to blow that out, too? 
Well, our, our, the role that e-commerce and our stores play, our direct business, is really to help us with our consumer engagement as well as to help validate products. So our associates have a great sense in terms of what's working, what, what's resonating with consumers, and we can then take that and expand distribution with national retailers. Let's talk about validation. When I see your product, I remember how much money some of these, the branded companies, and including those endorsements, pay to make you think that they're better. What happens in head-to-head -head competition with Elf? Oh, yeah, sure. I'll show you a great example. So our whole mission and one of the things we love doing is bringing kind of what we call first-to-mass innovation. First-to-mass. So first-to-mass. So these are often are ideas or items that you could only previously find in prestige. So a great example is our face primers. And for the, for the guys in your audience, a face primer is much like painting your house. It's that first coat you put on. Okay. And it allows basically to f smooth wrinkles and, and, and fine I'm familiar lines. with that. And so, but we, so they do major prior house to that, painting so, so good head-to-head -head is, you know, prior to that, there was a prestige item that had a face primer. And what we do in our face primer, we always try to go one up. So we end up putting in a better packaging, a better dispensing, because you, you know having a little pump is a better way. You don't need that much face primer to put on. Uh, the formulation is better. And when we give women this, first blinded, right. head to head, Elf wins. We take the blindfold off, and all of a sudden you see our face primer is $6, and the prestige item is $36. Right. Elf wins even higher. Well, I'd like to take it a little step further and say that I think the Elf, the stock wins because of all the work that you've done. I think okay. it's a brilliant model, and you've really proven e-commerce to mass, prestige to mass is a great thing that what you're doing for everybody in the country. So that's because it's a necessity. Okay. That, that's Charang Amin. He is the chairman and CEO of ELF Beauty. ELF stands for? Eyes of Space. There you go. Stay with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.